You're and, Joe, and, your mother <laughs> Joe Bond. Eventually, I changed it <laughs> to where. <laughs> Bros, I am here. I am in North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, North Cackalack. I think that's what they call it. I am here to meet with the man himself, Joe Bunn, and we are here to shoot some content for the DJ's vault. And of course, we're gonna be killing two birds with one stone. I'm also going to be filming some content for my YouTube channel. If you guys haven't met Joe, I'll introduce you guys to him right now. It should be a fun-filled day of content creation for you guys. Joe has a ton of cool toys that he wants to show us. He's got his brand new command center. He's also got the brand new EV uh, 30 M's, which we're also going to be taking a look at. So uh, a lot of cool stuff. Let's head downstairs, meet with Joe, get this show on the road. Get ready. Yeah. What's up, dude? So uh, here we are, we are in the white space. This is uh, Linus right here. He's uh, the tech guy behind uh, all this stuff. This is where the, the vault videos are filmed right back here. You guys can see super professional. We got the studio lights, we got the camera, we got the C stands, we got the sound deafening uh, curtains or blankets, yeah. We got the man Joe Bunn, so this is where it happens, huh? This is where it happens, man. Yes. Every month. This is it, this is what it looks like. We're planning on shooting a couple of videos today. We have the command center, that's what it's called, right? Command center right here, Bun gear. This is actually a prototype, but um, we're gonna be taking a look at that. I'll be filming a video on that. And then we also have the brand new EV Evolve 30s. These are the brand new guys. I don't even know if these are shipping yet, huh? Ah, oh, got it before everybody so uh, these are it right here these are the Evolve 30s they're the miniature version of the 50s all right so we just wrapped up video one we're now going to uh, set up a faux ballroom so that we can kind of show you guys about camera placement the videos that we're filming for DJ Volt is more or less how I record how I shoot my videos we're making that happen right now we're making a faux ball <laughs> So this is our makeshift wedding venue. We have our DJ booth right here. That's the brand new Bun Gear Command Center. Yes, that's the brand new one. And it is clean up in person. Oh my God, it looks so crispy. Let's do this. You ready to film some more videos? Let's do it. Let's do it. The last and final shot is our superstar rock star shot. Getting our entire setup in the frame as well as our dance. Check one, two. So uh, this is uh, video number three, I would say. Uh, we are making progress. Now we are doing a video on the Evolve 30M. Now Joe here is actually a big uh, fan of the Evolve 50s. So what's new about these, man? Uh, I think these, man, are going to be really good for cocktail hour in the hall while you're in the ballroom. Okay. I think these are going to be even better for ceremonies. You're going to be able to run the entire ceremony. Yeah. So ch mixer, check out the yeah, check out the, the mixer. They they played uh, no games when it came to the None. ins and outs of this. This is uh, crazy. Yeah, Full dedicated good. mixer built in. This is great for musicians too. Huh? Sick for like yeah. a one man band or you know, singer songwriter in a bar. Yeah. That is a serious video, man. That, that, that final couple. Yeah. That's not. That's very, uh, that's very immense. And this here is the command center. It's still a prototype. It will be shipping out in March. There will be some changes between this one and the final product that goes out, but the aesthetics of it will remain the same. Just wrapping up here at the white space. This is a famous bun mobile, huh? <laughs> bun bins. Bun bins. Wow. Check this out. I saw the video that you made on this. I was like, yeah. man, I want one. I've changed it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, it changes when you change your gear. Yeah. You know, basically, I always tell people like, if they want to do something, take all your gear to a place in your town called a Fleet Upfitter. See, What's a Fleet, fleet Upfitter? So, what like, Time Warner Cable wanted to do 50 vans, uh. and they wanted them the exact same with the exact same shelving and a wire spooler and all that stuff, they would take Ooh. a fleet upfitter. 
So take it there, show them all your gear, lay it out, and be like, this is the stuff that needs to go in here. And they'll, and they'll optimize us for your gear. Exactly. That is a nugget That's you it. just gave <laughs> there. Wow, you just blew my mind. This is dope. And I love that matte black that you yeah, did here. Yeah, yeah, he killed that. That's so sick. All right, guys, so uh, to close out this video, I just wanted to do a nice little sit down video, a nice little interview with Joe Bunn. For those of you guys who may not know Joe Bunn, he's a real big influencer in the mobile DJ community. So Is that I just, a good thing? Yeah, good. everybody knows you in the mobile DJ community. Okay. And I kind of wanted to pick your head yeah. um, how you got to this point where so many people know and respect you and your company. Your company is like studied by multiple mobile DJs around the country. It's crazy. Tell us the story about Joe Bunn. How yeah. did you get uh, into DJing? What made you get sure. into uh, the just the DJ life? And then where was that transition? There's a business. Name. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, basically it started from like 13 years old, okay. middle school. So you were 13 when you started? Yeah, 13. Wow. So this, okay. is, this is 30, 35th year. This okay. Is going into the 35th year. And, you know, there was a guy that was doing our teen club parties. He was terrible. Okay. And I was like, I can do better. And I just took my parents' home stereo out of the house and set it up. Didn't have enough records to even cover the time. Wow. Played those parties. And then, honestly, that was like through, even through high school. I think we... So I you were DJing all that? All, all that yeah. time. You never went to go work for anybody else? No. You just kind of learned it on your own? No. You were... From 13 to 16, I was just, you know, literally using my parents' home stereo right. and some stuff from Radio Shack. And then a guy that was doing it in Wilson, you know, there was yeah. one DJ. Yeah. He said, I'm going to stop doing this and become a golf pro. And he called me and yeah. he said, hey, I hear you're DJing around town. Do you want to buy my trailer and my gear? And he had a couple contracts. Yeah. And I think I was like 15 or 16. Yeah. Was yeah. that the start of Bun DJ Core? Did no. you call yourself like DJ I, I, Joe Bun? It was Bun? just DJ Joe Bun. Right. And that was on okay. the side of the trailer. And uh, eventually I started driving, did all the high school parties yeah. around town. Then went to UNC, Chapel yeah. Hill. And that's when like it really jumped off, like in the frat party scene. Yeah. So so when did you pivot? We all go through that phase where yeah. we're you know we're just the DJ guy. This sure. is just some side money coming sure. in for us. When did you decide, all right, this is this is there's some money to be made, this is a legit business. Did you always have that entrepreneurial uh, mindset that you're like, I'm that's gonna be my, my I've thing? I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset, but I didn't think that was my thing. Yeah. And so I graduated in ninety four. And then I moved to the beach okay. because I was going to start a mail order company. We were doing hats and t-shirts, yeah. like collegiate apparel. Mm -hmm. This was, again, before lids. Mm -hmm. This was before Amazon. This was before the internet. Dude, I'm surprised that didn't I take mean, off. Like, I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, it started to. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we went to the mall one day and we're like, and what's that new store in the corner? Lids. Mm. And I was like, damn, we're in trouble. Missed we're, it by that much. <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> and then the internet exploded yeah. and you know, people didn't need it. But we had like a legit little catalog. Yeah. Like we were shipping out oh, of so the you, house. It was a legit business. It was a business. Oh, okay. And lost a quick 30, yeah. 40,000 there. So immediately went back to DJing in the bars and clubs. Mm -hmm. And this was before everybody was a DJ. This right. was before the technology was so yeah. easy. There was no Serato. Yeah. If you didn't have the record or the CD, yeah. you didn't have the track. Yeah. Like there was no downloads. Yeah. And so I'd go to these bars and clubs. I'd be like, listen, I'm a DJ. I have the music. Right, I have the music. <laughs> and That's I'd something like, you can't yeah, say now. No, yeah, everybody's got it. And, I, and I'd look around, and let's say it's a Wednesday, and I'd be yeah. like, you know, there's 10 people in here. I think next week I can put 50. And the week after that, I think I can put 100. And then I think in about a month or two, So you were doing the, the full like uh, club DJ guy, mm -hmm. promoting, yes, bringing people. But yes. the, the, the gist was everybody that walks through that door is going to pay me $5. And my friend Barr is going to work the door to make sure that I get my mm. money. Okay. And you keep all the bar money. All the alcohol money. Essentially, yours. you were a promoter. You took over yes. the spot. And then yes. you were just, this is my but, but then one spot became two. And then two became three. And then, you know. Okay, so why pivot and why not go into an events kind of guy where, all right, I'm going to host events. I'm going to bring celebrities and make my cut at the door. It's, why did you, when did you pivot to weddings, to private events? So then, so Wilmington kind of comes to a close like late 90s, yeah. like 99, 2000. Okay. And okay. I was like, I need to move to a bigger city. So I moved to Raleigh, which is the capital of North Carolina. Not as big as Charlotte, but okay. in the middle of the state, still close to the beach. And I got here and I started doing the same thing. I'd go in these bars and nightclubs and I started playing at those. But then I started getting called. People that I'd gone to school with years ago. Yeah. I'm getting married. Yeah. You still DJing? And then I got 
you know, busy doing those, and I got so frustrated having to tell people I was booked. It didn't take me long to realize I got to get some people. So I brought yeah. the, I brought my right hand man from Wilmington here. Yeah. I went and got Randy, who's now been yeah. 17 years with me. Okay. Uh, I went in the record store and I looked at him. No, I was at a, a nightclub and I saw him playing. And I went up and I was like, you're going to start working for me on Monday. And then he worked in a record store. Yeah. So he had his pipeline to other DJs that were buying yeah. records. So one guy became two, then five, then ten. But uh, you had that amount of volume. You had that amount of leads where no. you can kind of like no, bring I in all these guys. I didn't. I, but I needed those first two or yeah. three. And once I did get those first two or three, then I did start to get that volume yeah. and that reputation because they were so, so good. Uh, a lot of it is with trust because it's like it's your baby. And it's I, all I think trust. about it for myself. I I, I want to be that guy. I'm the marketing guy. I'm I know. The, I'm the sales guy. I'm the MC. I'm the DJ. I want to do it all. It's it's my baby. And I don't want nobody messing it up. When did you realize? It's okay, there are other guys who are possibly better, can do this better right. than me. It's your name. Literally, your name is on that billboard. Yeah, that's the even yeah. worse. That's the scariest part <laughs> that's of being a multi yeah, Right. Because it is, it is, like you said, it goes back. It's all about trust. Again, I would only hire people that had some sort of experience. Yeah. I don't care if it was Joe's skating rink. Ah, okay. And I would bring that guy in and say, listen, man, just go with me for the next six weekends. Okay. One, to see if you really want to do this. Okay. Or two, you know, how does this guy act around me? Before I'm going to waste all this time training this Gotcha. Guy, so so you're, you're more of critical. like, let me find somebody that I can polish. They're already yes. a DJ, but let me just uh, yes. sh give him the tools to become a... Yeah, because yeah, they've primary. got a music library. Yep. They have gear, usually. Yep. They, they know the what song yeah. to play, when to play yeah. it. You know, it just was one of those things. It, is, is it just nature of the beast? Because whenever I talk to DJs, everybody's got their own little company. Is that just the nature of the beast that you're bound to lose guys? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's part of it, man. Yeah. Look, I, I'm knock on wood, man. It's been very stable here for yeah. many years. But there was a phase where people would leave. The main thing you have to do is you have to pay your DJs really well to so keep them so around. Real. And it was never that. It was more of a, I'm going to go do my own thing and I'm going to be the next Joe Bunner or I'm going to run you out of business. Yeah. Those were the kind of people that left. Yeah. And you know how many people that we've seen since then run me out of business? Zero. Zero. You're still here. Your marketing is top notch. All the branding is all top notch. What are, what are some tips that you can give people when it comes to that? There were two things I've all, often told people that were like the pivot points where I yeah. saw these huge spikes in business. Yeah. The first one was when we rebranded mm -hmm. and it is that it was a different it was always version. bun dj co it right? was no it was originally joe bun dj company okay and then everybody uh, wants the, joe <laughs> <laughs> right and the play button logo had a little yeah. bit different look but it okay. was the same and the colors were a little yeah. different then when we started opening offices across the country yes. with other owners in those offices people kept calling them joe right. so i dropped the joe and just went to bun dj company but the play button has been like that for many many years so the rebrand was one and then the second thing was getting an office space those were the two times this was a back when nobody had an office. Right. So actually, when I got my office space, I actually got it because somebody said, it just makes you look legit. Yeah. And the second thing somebody said to me was like, clients like knowing they can come beat you up if you ruin their Yeah, life. yeah, exactly. So th th that's kind of one of the, the pros of having an office. Yeah. Is like, I know where to find you. Exactly, kind of right. And uh, people like me and you yeah. are asking for a lot of money up front before yeah. you've even performed it in an event. Yeah. They feel a lot more comfortable if you're asking for 1800 Versus them, like, send it to this P.O. Box. Yeah, right. Yeah, kind of, like, wait, yeah, who exactly. is this guy? Exactly. All right, um, I want to pivot back because you yeah. mentioned you have multiple offices. Mm -hmm. That's something that's... I, I don't know if you're the first, I, I could be wrong, but I've never seen that. I've seen giant multi-op sure. companies, but I've never seen guys say, I have an office in this state and that mm -hmm. state and mm -hmm. this city over here, mm -hmm. over there. That's so scary and also <laughs> so inspirational. Right, right. Is it a franchise? Is it... Are, do I you would, still have a, a, a say in that or is yeah. it more or less you're lending your name and then they can do whatever they want with that? It, I would say it's more of a licensing agreement okay. than a franchise. Not not sense. for me, but for the viewers watching at home, walk me between the differences between a franchise and a licensing agreement. Man, that's a great question. Probably how much the paperwork costs. Okay. Like I think true franchise paperwork was like a 50 So a true investment. franchise is like, I'm, I'm, I'm DJ Bar in New Jersey. Bun DJ Company is known all around the country. I want to start my own franchise. Is like how much do I have to pay you, and then you yes. you kind of market for me. The, so it, it doesn't work that sense because you don't run commercials on TV and stuff right, like that. Right, yeah, yeah. The the people that are in these other five offices yeah. were very close to me. In other words, yeah. they worked here yeah. at, in Raleigh yeah. at some point in their career. Right. 
And then they approached me and said, I want to do what you do. I want to run a multi-op company. Okay. And I said, not in my city. And Get out. Yeah, get not out. Not my turf. Yeah. And so everybody... <laughs> Everybody kind of just dispersed. Yeah. You know, one guy wanted to move back closer to home. Yeah. One guy, you know, I told him, I said, Charleston is the second leading destination yeah. location to get married in the country. Okay. Um, you know, one guy was living in Richmond doing construction. Yeah. One guy was living in San Diego and hadn't worked for me in 10 years. Yeah. Like, and then my sister's in Montana. Like, yeah. So everybody ha was very close to me. They knew yeah. the system. They knew the kind of people. So what essentially do you provide for them aside yeah. from their name? Why, why, they, would, why would they want to go that route instead of saying, I work for Joe. I know what he does. Instead of being DJBar.com. Exactly. Com. Right. Right. So for the main thing was, because if you think about it, DJs know me. Yeah. But like nobody in Montana knows what Blood yeah. DJ Company is. Yeah. Or even before we were in Richmond. Nobody yeah. knew what we were in Richmond, yeah. Virginia. But you're buying into a website, right, that is existing. And you can add, like, your name to this list of yeah. locations, right? So, again, adds credibility. Yeah. Then it looks like we have DJ company, DJs and DJ yeah. individuals all over the country. But mainly they're buying into, one, the system that I've created. Okay. How to hire, how to train, how to do a show, period. Okay. Um, the name and then the reviews. Right. I mean, we have literally probably two or three thousand. Is, is reviews. it all? Uh, all the reviews from all these places get funneled into one spot. Or they do. Is, they do. Yeah. They do. That's amazing. Right. So you must have a shit ton of reviews. Tons. Wow. Right. We're okay. in the probably twelve, fifteen hundred on Wedding Wire. Probably the you know. So somebody in California can review Bun DJ Company, and that's that. Somebody it here goes, in, in North Carolina can see that same review. Yeah. It just goes to the aggregate. Ah. Uh, you know? Okay. So they're all culminated. Not and that what. So essentially, what you're selling it. is the reputation. Yeah. The reputation exactly. and, and and the brand behind it. And. Every you have to think about all the hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars I've lost over the yeah. years, hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars from making dumb decisions. Yeah. So anytime they need me to reach out, should yeah. I buy this or should I do this or you know yeah. I got a guy that's doing this. How so should you I you provide kind of like uh like business consulting yeah. more or less. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but a lot of the stuff is in the vault. To yeah. be honest with you. I mean, plug. Go ahead and plug the vault while the, you're at the, it. The vault. The yes. The DJsVault.com. I mean. The stuff that I've taught them and right. given them is I, I've not really held back from the people in the vault. You're doing so much. You yeah. have all these companies all over the place. Uh, yeah. All the Bun DJ Co's um, here, um, you know, from the east to the west. Yeah. Um, now you have the DJ's vault. Mm -hmm. Now you have Bun DJ Gear. Is, is somebody else taking more of a lead role in Bun DJ Co? Yeah. Are you having to take more of a step back to uh, to address all these other projects that I you're do. doing? Yep. Yep. I. Up until February twentieth of twenty nineteen, which is when the DJ's Vault launched. Yes, I was. Oh, happy birthday! Yeah, I know, We're coming <laughs> happy up. Happy birthday! It's very, yeah, yeah. very soon. We're gonna have a big uh, throwdown uh, nice. webinar, and I'm giving away a bunch of stuff. So, but so coming up on the one year, one hundred percent. I had to. I was like, oh man, because I would. I would do things like that. People were like, why are you still the person that answers the phone? Why are you still the person that responds yeah. to the inquiries? Yeah. Why are you the one that still sends out the contract, goes to the bank every day? And I'm like, because I like it. Yeah. And because I I have my finger on the pulse of exactly yeah. how the business is doing. I, I, I've been asked that same question. Yeah. They're like, when when I want to book, uh, uh, when I want to book like Fifty Cent or something, I'm yeah, not gonna yeah, call, yeah. call up 50, and get 50, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Be like, yo, Fifty, come right. visit my party. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I've been told that. So Trust essentially, me. that's what that, that's what people are saying to you. Like, why are you doing that? Yeah, and, 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 you're and, Joe, and, you're motherfucking Joe Bond. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> I changed it <laughs> to where there was this cute girl named Sarah Jones. Yeah. And I changed my signature to her. Yeah. Or info at Bundy J Company yeah. was like Sarah Did you make Jones. that name up or no no, oh. no her name. Sarah Jones. She did work here for a yeah. while. And I even asked her, I'm like, yeah, you Can know I respond to emails uh, as yeah. Sarah Jones and she was like, Go for it. Yeah. So anyway, but at the <laughs> at, at that at that point where yeah. the vault kind of blew up All right. and I was like, Oh my god, this is actually yeah. working. Yeah. I was like Randy, who again had been here sixteen years. Yeah. He does eighty some weddings a year just himself. Okay. Um, didn't have a family, okay. uh, never got married, never have kids. So didn't really want to be a realtor anymore. Yeah. I just said, listen, man, can you do all this admin? Yeah. Can you answer the phone? Can you book these shows? Uh, you know, even my shows, can you book all my shows? Yeah. Other than pr I'll still prep my own shows. I yeah. still go out and set up all my own yeah. gear. He said, absolutely. So I got really lucky, but for me, everything became 
creating content for the DJ the DJ's wall. wall. Yeah. So and, and then and then getting ready for my own show. Going back to the start of this video, the mobile DJ world knows you. Um, there's no right. doubt about that. How did you How did you go from you know North Carolina yeah. go to wedding DJ Joe Bunn to all these DJs around the that was the, crazy. the world know yeah. you? Is that because you've taken a um, an initiative to kind of get yourself out there for the mobile DJ community. It started because you're out there at all these shows. I yeah. mean, whenever I see you, it's be, as because you're show. at these shows. That's how we know each yeah. other. Yeah, um, it it started from yes, educating yeah. people, but on a writing articles basis. Mm -hmm. So I would write for Mobile Beat. Mm -hmm. DJ Times would do some kind of an article, like a spotlight on okay. it. I would write for John Young at This Chucky News. Mm -hmm. Then I was asked to speak. And then I think those first few seminars were really bad. Yeah. But I had this like, yeah. I just think we all need to be better. There's yeah. still so much cringeworthy stuff right. that I see on the internet or just, you know, somebody set up. And I'm like, man, there's there's people to look up to to be better. And that's, that's how it started. Honestly, yeah. I was like, let me write an article about this, about marketing, about branding. Let me go speak on this. Like, I never did any sort of rah-rah or like motivational, like, yeah, that kind of talk. It was always like, this here is are the what things you need to do. Yeah, yeah, here are the things I do. Here are the things you should be doing to yeah. make yourself better. Now, the DJ's Ball has become an awesome resource for like all the mobile DJs out there. Yeah. Um, what was the idea behind that? When did you decide, I have all this knowledge, why don't I just Man. put it out there? Um, you know, it's, it, I, I heard you say the other day, you're like the Netflix of mobile DJs. It, that that yeah. actually is yeah. accurate because it yeah. wasn't, it's not like a course yeah. where there's modules yeah. where you have to take this module before you can move to this module. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'm having marketing yeah. trouble. Okay, go to the marketing yeah. section. It, it came about from having this hundreds of articles yeah. backlogged yeah. and then several yeah. short videos, but really it came from, I had those three long videos that I was selling yeah. for like $100 each. Yeah. Whenever I spoke, I'd walk out in the hall and at the yeah. end I would sell these thumb drives. Marketing the music, selling the music, marketing the music about yeah. branding and marketing, selling the music was about, you know, sitting down. Yeah. Literally, I filmed myself at a consultation yeah. and then hiring the music. How do I find my DJs? Yeah. So the DJs vault every month fresh content every how do you go month. about curating all every this content month. i mean i mean you brought me here so i mean you're obviously working <laughs> I, I always work it man i got a lot of people that reach out and want to come i reach out to a lot of people that yeah. i want to come but man honestly i i mean i have a list right now we could go in yeah. there and look at my wonder list and to do there, list yeah yeah there, there's <laughs> 50 ideas. videos yeah. that are on deck and either they come from my brain mm -hmm. or the the, the the members tell me they will say man i would love to see a video on blah 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 Okay, and I'll just make a note that the next time I go in the white space and shoot, I'm going to shoot that. And so, man, it, now it's become really like almost a, a truly on demand yeah. because people say, here's what I want to see. And a lot of times I'll be like, oh, you just missed it, man. It's under the essential documents section. Second thing I want to address, it's not just Bun DJ Co. It's not just the DJ's vault. It's also Bun Gear. Now, you told me that Bun Gear was actually already around, but now it's kind of like a relaunch. This is Correct. a brand new product that you're putting out. What's t Talk to me about the vision behind Bun DJ Gear, what the command center is all about, and, and where you see that going. What what other kind of tools do you want to bring to mobile DJ? Because yeah. I'm assuming this is just a start. It is. It is. It, it, we started it as... The, it was actually called Vision DJ Designs Yes, about three years ago. And we made those first, let's say, 30 or 40 fiberglass booths. Right. We sold them. They had that similar kind of T-shape. Right. We sold, I don't know, 30 or 40 across the country, a few in Canada. And it was just a little bit impractical. It yeah. took a long time to make. Fiberglass is a pain yeah. in the butt. And about a year ago, I just said, listen, man, let's just shut this thing down. But I was still so passionate, again, about, like, we need to be looking better than this. Like... People look terrible just yeah. set up on a table. Even my own guys, I'm yeah. like, we're guilty of it as well. Yeah. I'm like, this has to stop. I felt like that product was like half there. And so yeah. I met up with this guy, one of my son's friends, and he said, this is what I do. I bring products to life. And finally found somebody to redesign it, um, change the material, you know, make it lighter, faster to put together, add the rack. I mean, everything that, that I wanted in the first iteration is in it now. What's the future with that? What else? What, is there other ideas that you have in mind that you want to do or this is just baby steps, first step one, let's see if this works and then we'll kind of It's go definitely from there. step one, is yeah. this going to work? Yeah. Can, I, can I get my money back? Yeah. And my time back? Yeah. Because you've but, always done more or less service-based business. This yeah, is your first correct. time that you're it's doing a something tangible. It's a first product. Yeah. Yep. It's a first yeah. product. It's got accessories with it. I mean, I'm super proud of it. I think yeah. it's going to do really well. Yeah. I wanted to be 
completely transparent to the audience. I wanted it to be at a lower price point. Yeah, it's just not possible. Yeah, not possible. Even if it, I even if I had committed to e making a thousand, yeah, even with with shipping costs. Yeah, when, when you get to oh, bulk, bulky items like that, shipping it's, it's, alone is two hundred dollars. Period. So we've touched all the bases. We've talked about these three different companies: DJ's Vault, Bun DJ Co, Bun Gear. Is Bun DJ Co still the priority, or is your main focus now on your new ventures, DJ's Vault, right. or Bun Gear? The, I, st I still feel like the priority is Bun DJ Company. Bun DJ Company. Yeah. And so I'm at still, heart, you're still the DJ. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm still playing the shows. I still go out. You know, probably 30 out of 52 Saturdays and play. Wow. Uh, I'm out tomorrow, you know, doing a private event out of town. Like, I still play yeah. a lot of shows. So, if all the, you know, if, if you know, DJ's Vault is gone, Bun DJ Gear is gone, um, you know, all this... Uh, peripheral. Uh, yeah, peripheral stuff is gone. You're going back. You're still DJing. That's what you know and love. Yeah. That's your bread and butter. Yeah. Absolutely, man. It's still... Yeah. It, 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 it endures. It has ridden through recession. That, that's what I've heard. Yeah. I've heard people are always going to get married. They're yeah. like, no matter how bad the economy is, the girl's still going to ask for the ring. Funerals, <laughs> babies... You know, there's certain yeah. things that just yeah. are, are, are recession proof yeah. almost. And you, weddings are those, right? Weddings are that. Yeah. Man. We, we, even in 09 <laughs> when it was at its worst, you know, yeah. I, I tell you who took a beating, yeah. where all these $10,000 cover bands. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to get that 10000 but I can get a $2,000 DJ. Yeah. And still kill it. Yeah. You know? So, lastly, <clears throat> what is your day to day? Because it, yeah. there's three companies. What exactly sure. are you doing? You wake up, you go to the gym, you come here, and then <laughs> what? Come in here, you count your money, and that's no, it. No, I do not count money. <laughs> there's no counting money anymore. It's like, how much went out last night? Um, but I come in, and it's basically just emails, especially now, yeah. like going Everything into this final email. stretch yeah. of shipping this yeah. booth about the bags or yeah. about, you know, changing the color a little bit or about yeah. making it, the paint more glossy. Yeah. Um, and then again, I'll start looking at that list of content. Yeah. When are we going to shoot this month? Yeah. Then, you know, I need a full day to sit with him to review the videos yeah. after he edits. So, right. so Bun like, Gear and the Vault have taken priority in your life. Yeah. Right? You're doing 100%. a lot more of that than 100%. actually. So you're not logging in and checking out, okay, what events are my guys ready to go for this? No. You're not doing that anymore. No. No, no, no. no. Wow. It's either automated or Randy's doing it. Yeah. And then if I need to step in, yeah. The, the the guys, even all my DJs, yeah. the 15 people that yeah. work for me, if I see them call or reach out, yeah. I know that something is wrong. Yeah. Like, I, I would actually, like, so there, in front you, of me, you, like, you set up wrong? a chain of commands where Correct. don't reach out to me unless, like, Correct. somebody died or something Correct. like that. And even okay. with Randy, he won't book me unless he, me personally, unless he asks me. Okay. So he'll say, it's at this venue, it's this much money. Um, it's this far away, you're doing this the day before, you're doing this the day after, do you want to do this show? And I'll be like, let me, you know, and I'll factor in all yeah. that. No or yes. You yeah. know, it's simple. How many events are you doing yourself now? I still do yeah. 30 weddings in you about... You cap yourself at that? Or no, it's, it's just, just like you fill it out? It just, the way that, I, my price point now is $1,000 more than my guys. Yeah. And so that's just the way it falls, yeah. man. It's very consistent. Like if I look at the last yeah. three or four years since I raised my price yeah. above theirs... It's around that 30. It's a big jump. Yeah. It is a yeah, big jump. It's a big yeah. jump. Yeah. And a, probably another 20, 25 private or corporate events. So okay. let's say 50 some shows a year, maybe That's 60. That's still a lot. Though. Yeah. That's still a lot of yeah, shows. That's at least going out once a week. Yeah. Now. Once a week. Once, wow. a, once, once or twice a week. Joe Bun, I, you've said it all. Thank you so much for having me here in Raleigh. It was an Dude. absolute pleasure. We filmed a ton of content Tons. for the DJ's Vault. So if you're not subscribed to the DJ's Vault, Joe Bun, quick pitch on the DJ's Vault. What is it? Why should they sign up? Link is down below. Go I was ahead. about to say, link's going to be down below. The DJ's Vault.com. Guys, articles, webinars every single week with guests like Barr and all kinds of people that you guys admire. Uh, short videos, long videos, all the essential documents I use. Discounts from people like NLFX and Rock and Roller and, and Style Flip and uh, Jetpack Bags and everybody else. Like, there is so much stuff in the vault that for 20 or $30 a month, guys, you cannot go wrong. Again, you can quit at any time. Yeah, if you don't like it, you can bail. Just dip. Yeah. We're going to sell annual memberships are coming up for the one-year membership uh, or the one-year anniversary on uh, February 20th. We're going to do a webinar. I'm going to give away everything that I can possibly give away that night, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Joe's also uh, next month launching Bun 
gear with the brand new command center. Fungear.com. Yes, and that's going to be linked down below. Joe, thank you so much for everything. Thank you. And uh, like I said, guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this trip here to Raleigh, North Carolina. Please like this video if you like this. Subscribe if you're new around here. And if you really want to help me out, don't forget to turn on that bell so you can be notified next time me and Joe film another video just like this one. Thank you, bro. Stay awesome. Peace. Bye.